Hello friends, welcome to my channel Plant Science for You. Today we will start our new video series on plant breeding, so stay tuned and watch the video till the end. In this video we will talk about Introduction to Plant Breeding, the first chapter from your BD Sing book. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe and share with your friends and batchmates. If we see in the introduction of this chapter, it starts the stats of, of the period of 1960s, when we see a quantum jump on the food grains, which we call as green revolution. If we interpret what our exact cause behind this huge increase in the food grains yield, we will find that it was due to use of better inputs like fertilizer, irrigation water, plant protection, and culture practices as well, which make this green revolution possible and make India as self-dependent in food grain production. But we all know that India has ranked the first in world population ranking that is kind of good as well as bad news too. To fed this huge population, we must have think of new alternatives, better say, second green revolution. But we all know that the net crop area is also decreasing day by day, and many other problems too. So here comes the important role of plant breeding by which we can modify the generic makeup of our cultivable plants, such that it provides more yield, we can increase its resistance to biotic and abiotic stress that will decrease the yield loss. We can also prefer doble and multiple cropping, which can also improve our input uses and give more productive cropping systems. The most emerging technology that can rule over period is the GM crops. Every year we are come across with different genetically modified crops like GM, mustard, GM brinjal, GM, soybean, etc. But unfortunately this all are banned in India, but if we see they are comfortably ruling in the Western countries, So what is plant breeding? It can be defined as principles and the methods required for favorably changing the genetic constitution of crop plants for the benefit of human being. According to Vavilov, it is the plant evolution directed by man. There are five different stages of plant breeding. In the first step, we domesticate a plant and bring it in human management. In the second step, we select our desirable plants from a variable genetic resources. Hybridization is the third important step when we cross between two genetically dissimilar plants, and it helps us creating new genetic variation. And there are many other techniques like mutation, polyploidy, somaclonal variations, which helps to create new genetic variations. Genetic engineering is most recently developed technique and widely used nowadays, which helps us bringing genes from an unrelated organism to our desired crop plants. The first phase consisted of domestication during which prehistoric humans brought wild plant species under human management. Domestication began over 11,000 years ago, when humans are believed to have started agriculture. Domestication is the first and the most critical step as it makes a plant species accessible to crop improvement efforts. Domestication continues till today and is likely to continue for some time in future. In the second phase, conscious and planned selection was practiced to exploit the natural genetic variation existing in the crop species. We can define selection as identification and isolation of desirable plants and growing their progenies. In other words, it allows reproduction only of those plants that have desirable characteristics. It can be of two types, natural selection carried out by nature where the best fitted plants survive, and other one is artificial selection, where we practice selection to fulfill our needs. But in modern plant breeding methods, natural selection is of little value, and they are based entirely on artificial selection. History of Selection Le Couture, a farmer of the Isle of Jersey, published his results on selection in wheat in the year 1843. He concluded that progenies from single plants were more uniform than the remaining population, and that different progenies were of different agricultural value. About the same time, a Scotsman named Patrick Shireff practiced individual plant selection in wheat and oats, and developed some valuable varieties. He concluded that only the variation of heritable nature responded to selection, and that this variation arose through natural sports, mutation, and by natural hybridization. Some years later, beginning in 1857, Hallett in England practiced single plant selection in wheat, oats, and barley, and he developed several commercial varieties, for example, Chevalier barley. About this time, Vilmorin proposed individual plant selection based on progeny test. 
This method successfully improved the sugar content in sugar beets, beta vulgaris, in 12 years. The individual plant selection method was developed in detail by Nielsen Ehle and his associates at Svalov, Sweden, around 1900. In 1903, Johansson proposed the pure line theory that provided the genetic basis for individual plant selection. Today, hybridization is the most common method of crop improvement, and the vast majority of crop varieties have resulted from hybridization, which is defined as mating or crossing of two plants or lines of dissimilar genotype, which simply means placing pollen grains from one genotype, the male parent, to the stigma of flowers of the other genotype, the female. History of hybridization Babylonians and Assyrians hand-pollinated date palm as early as 700 BC for metaxenic effects of pollen. Metaxenia is the effect of pollen on maternal tissues of fruit. Sex in plants was discovered by Camerarius in 1694. In 1717, Thomas Fairchild produced the first artificial hybrid, the Fairchild's mule, by crossing Sweet William, Dianthus barbatus, with Carnation, Dianthus caryophyllus. Subsequently, many scientists used hybridization for scientific studies as well as for crop improvement. Notable among such scientists are Kohlreuter, who made many crosses in tobacco during 1760 to 1766, and emphasized hybrid vigor in F1. Knight, who developed several varieties of apples, pears, peaches, grapes, and currants during 1759 to 1835. Many other scientists, like Goss, Sargret, Gertner, and Nodden, who had noted uniformity in F1, dominance in F1, and segregation and appearance of parental types in F2. But it was left for Mendel, 1865, to propose the clear-cut laws of inheritance. The breeding methods based on hybridization acquired a scientific basic with the elucidation of various genetic and cytogenetic principles, which followed the rediscovery, in 1900, of the Mendel's work published originally in 1866. Subsequently, the detailed studies of East, published in 1908, and Schull, published in 1909, on inbreeding in maize, paved the way for the development of hybrid varieties, first in maize and later in several other crops. Intervarietal hybridization continues, and is most likely to continue, to be the major approach for improvement of self-pollinated, where the final product of intervarietal hybridization is a pure line or hybrid variety. In cross-pollinated crop, the final product is a hybrid or synthetic or composite variety, as well as an asexually propagated crop species. Final product is a clone. Distant hybridization has made notable contributions, particularly in the development of disease-resistant varieties. Distant hybridization dates back to 1717 and is credited to Thomas Fairchild, but its agricultural application is much more recent. For example, production of Raffinobrassica by Karpachenko in 1928. Somatic hybridization began in 1972 when Carlson and co-workers successfully obtained an interspecific hybrid by fusing the protoplasts of Nicotiana glauca with those of N. Langsdorfi. However, it is just beginning to deliver potential commercial products. The fourth phase of plant breeding began with the objective of creating novel genetic variation not known available in a crop species. It can be achieved by mutation, polyploidy, somaclonal variations, and genetic engineering. New alleles of existing genes were created by inducing mutations using radiation like X-rays, Y-rays, etc., or chemical mutagens like ethyl methane sulfonate, EMS, etc. Induction of mutations became feasible following the demonstration in 1927 by Muller of mutagenic action of X-rays. The first mutation breeding program was launched in 1929 in Sweden by Ake Gustafsson and co-workers, and the first variety evolved through mutation breeding was released in 1950. Polyploidy attempted to exploit the beneficial effects of increased number of copies of a single genome, autopolyploidy, or of bringing together two or more distinct genomes, allopolyploidy. Work on allopolyploidy gained momentum with the synthesis of Nicotiana digluta from N. glutinosa and N. tabacum by Clausen and Goodspeed in 1925, and with the discovery of chromosome doubling action of colchicine in 1937 independently by Blakesley and Nebel. 
Autopolyploidy has made a limited contribution, while Allopolyploidy has yielded a successful new crop species, Triticale hexaploidy. Somaclonal variation, genetic variation present in cultured cells, in plants regenerated from them or in the progeny of such plants, achieves the same end as mutagenesis, and some new and extremely useful alleles have been isolated by this approach. The use of somaxonal variations is rather recent dating back to 1970s. In the next phase, genetic engineering, which aims at the isolation and cloning of specific useful genes of various organisms, and their transfer and expression into plants. History of plant breeding in India Organized agricultural research in India dates back to 1871, when the government of India created the Department of Agriculture. The first scientist to be appointed in the department, in 1892, was an agricultural chemist. In 1905, the Imperial Agricultural Research Institute was established in Pusa, now in Bihar. This was the first agricultural research institute in the country. In between 1901 and 1905, Many agricultural colleges were established at Kanpur, Pune, Sabur, Lialpur, and Coimbatore. The Indian Central Cotton Committee was established in 1921. The committee carried out many notable researches on the breeding and cultivation of cotton, for example, development of 70 improved varieties of cotton. Imperial Council I of Agricultural Research was established in 1929. The buildings of IARE were damaged by an earthquake in 1934. The institute was, therefore, shifted to its present location in New Delhi in 1936. The name of the institute was changed to its present one, that is, Indian Agricultural Research Institute, IRE, and Indian Council of Agricultural Research, ICAR, in 1946. In 1956, a project for intensification of regional research on cotton, oil seeds, and millets, PIRCOM, was initiated in order to intensify research on these crops. The PIRCOM was located at 17 different centers spread throughout the country. It focused on cotton, castor, groundnut, brassica SPPE, till, toria, taramira, jawar, and bajra. The first agriculture university was established in 1960 at Patnagar, Nainital, UP. The All India Coordinated Maize Improvement Project was started in 1957 with the objective of exploiting heterosis. The first hybrid maize varieties developed under the project were released in 1961. In the next video, we will discuss about different activities, objectives, and achievements of plant breeding in detail. So please subscribe the channel and stay tuned. Thank you.